Me no drink coffee tea, mango time. No pure nice it may be mango time. In the eyes of the mango crop, I could read a little excerpt from the book so you have some to get some idea and feel of the Jamaican character. Don't give us too much, but you can give us a little. I love to hear. Like, subscribe, and share to Voices of Linden TV. Welcome to another edition of the Let's Talk Show. I'm your host, Andrew James, and today I'm pleased to have with us in studio via Zoom, Miss Etta Bryan. Miss Bryan is a Jamaican Canadian professional fashion designer whose hobby is uh, creative writing, um, painting, and uh, gardening. And of course, she's just the author of a brand new book. It's called uh, Bununo's Time. I'm pleased to welcome in the studio today, Miss Etta Bryan. Thanks for having me, Andrew. I really appreciate that. Welcome to the show, Miss Bryan. Miss Bryan, for folks watching the show that don't know who you are, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Well, as you stated, my name is um, Heather Bryan. I am from Jamaica. I spent the first half of my um, life in um, Jamaica. And the second half, I spent in Canada, um, Toronto, um, Canada, living with my wonderful husband, Brett. My profession is fashion designing, but I tend, by nature, I tend to be um, very creative. I love um, gardening, art painting, and creative writing. At age seven, I taught myself to sew, um, just making dresses for my dog. At 10 years old, I made my first skirt. And uh, when my uncle brother um, saw it, he was so impressed. He gave me $5 and he praised me to the moon and back. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, also, um, my grand aunt, she gave me one of those crank handled um, sewing machines, and mm -hmm. I, I never looked back. After finishing business college in Jamaica, it's kind of business college, my very first job was working at the Ministry of Education. And um, after six months, I um, was somewhere about there, I knew that the corporate um, work environment was definitely not for me. So um, it was off to um, fashion school where I studied um, pattern making and breeding for uh, two years. I worked in the Jamaica fashion industry, um, you know, to get experience. And after I branched out on my own while being still while there. When I arrived in Canada, I also worked as a fashion designer for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. However, it was um, very challenging. Being underpaid, um, it, it was just overwhelmingly challenging. So I, um, I did something about it. I created my own line, mm -hmm. one of a kind art career. Luckily at that time, for me, my um, I have a very good friend, and she had um, opened an IM store, and um, she carried my life. It did very well. In the meantime, I did a lot of fashion shows, and um, that did help to um, help me to build up a custom-made um, clientele. Well, you know, during my spare time, even you know, alongside my um, um, doing my fashion design, I started to do acrylic painting. And uh, I like it, I love it very much. I gave away my pieces to my friends as a um, gift, and they encouraged me to sell them. 
Yeah. So I had an art show at home. Um, over 50 people came out to see my art. I saw several pieces um, that afternoon. This was really awesome and very encouraging. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, as time goes by, I experienced a traumatic, a traumatic um, incident. Um, mm. My husband had a near-death experience um, while swimming in the neighbor's pool. Yeah. And um, shortly after that, um, COVID um, hit. So everything, um, everything came to a standstill. Mm -hmm. um, around this time, I was very disheartened. I had written the first three pages of a good man of sky 16 years prior to that. Wow. Um, if you look at this, the book, this picture on the back of this book holds some significance to this um, project. Um, it was 16 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and that same day, that same time, I took that picture. I had um, I wrote the first three pages of a phenomenal style. I just, you know, set it aside. Um, so during this time of sadness and uncertainty, I um, I went back to it. And uh, I finished it. I just, you know, um, the opportunity presented itself, like, you know, just something to do with my mind. And I finished the book. You know, Mr. Uh, Bryant, I know Jamaica is known for its good food and the culture and the people. And, you know, a lot of the big part of Jamaica is uh, tourism and so on. Can you tell us a little bit about your fond memories growing up as a child back home in Jamaica? <laughs> Um, there are so many. Mm -hmm. um, I could tell you about elementary school days yeah. and um, riding on quasi bus or old school bus, but that's <laughs> another story. <laughs> My most cherished memory mm -hmm. was spending time in the country with my grandfather, my grandma, you know, that generation. Mm -hmm. Sitting at their feet, mesmerized by their storytelling tale about um, um, rolling calf, which mm -hmm. is like a boss, uh, as we say in Jamaica, duck cow, and, um, and about um, River Mumma, also known as a mermaid. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, <laughs> they. Um, um, what is it? Burr and Nancy, a very cunning spider. Um, mm -hmm. If you look in the background, <laughs> you can see. Yeah. That's okay. their description, and it was in my mind, and I, you know, painted it. Mm -hmm. You know, I um, considered myself very privileged to have experienced that off the grid country lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, there was no electricity, there was no plumbing, there was no running water. Mm -hmm. And um, most of the food that we eat, um, it came from my grandfather's organic farm. Um, they made everything from scratch. Um, for example, the coffee cherries, it mm -hmm. was, when it was harvested, it was um, sun-dried. Then um, roast, then it was poured out into a marker and then we pound it into um, brown coffee. Mm -hmm. Also, the um, the cocoa beans that make hot chocolate yeah. went through the same um, process. And then there was the country baker, or in other words, to make a hearty food. Mm -hmm. um, let me tell you something. My aunt brown school chicken. <laughs> her start mackerel run dumb. Mm -hmm. 
for Hakian starts this with roast breadfruit, but mm -hmm. out of this world delicious. And um, it was because, you know, it got the flavor from the wood fire that she right. would cook on. Yeah, yeah the fire stove, yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. All the, um, okay, and then there was mango time. Now mango time in Jamaica is a very nice time. <laughs> <laughs> when it's mango time, I feast on them. You have, um... Black mango, stringy mango, dually mango, sweet mm -hmm. brushly mango. I mm -hmm. eat all of them. Um, <laughs> there's even a folklore song <laughs> about yeah. um, mango thai in Jamaica yeah. that says it all. Um, <laughs> it, it goes something like this. Um, me no drink coffee tea, mango time. No cure nice it may be mango time. In the height of the mango crop, when the fruit them are ripe and drop, wash your fat, turn them down, mango time. Oh. <laughs> what that is saying is like we don't eat um breakfast. Yes. Lunch or yes. dinner. So just put away the pot because mm -hmm. it's mango time. <laughs> the mango day, morning, night, all, all day, all day. Yes. Wow. Um, you know, all those yummy Jamaican food, they are memory keepsake. But um, the best thing of all was the blissful joy of just being a child. Mm hmm running wild in vast open spaces, you know, um, riding donkey, um, swinging on the guango tree, you know, my grandfather's um, property had this humongous guango tree, and then there were these um, cars and vines that dangled from it, and we, yes. you know, we used to swing from, like, it, it would take you out about a half an acre, that's how long it was. And we would and this, you know, we would swing over coffee tree all the way up. We did, we were fearless. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, just um playing, going by the river, running up the hill, going to a barrel and just rolling down the hill, you know, and you know, whenever it rains, um, I noticed these North American kids that have been in the nursery where right? that they would say, rain, rain. Go away, little Johnny wants to play. Uh uh. <laughs> Jamaica pick me. Or Jamaica children. Yeah. Whenever it rain, we would go in the rain, we would play in the, the rain. And um, our little nurse's song was um, Rain at fall, breeze a blow, chickens at the outer door. Those were happy days. Mm -hmm. um, all my art are storytelling pieces. Um, it's about um, the folklore, mythical creature. Mm -hmm. It's about the daily activities of the country women carrying baskets of cassava or baskets of mangoes on their head. Mm -hmm. I remember they would walk a special way and their hip would sway from side to side and they didn't need their hands to hold it. That would, it was just like it was glued on their head and they would do everything with their arms other than for, you know, just walking along. Mm -hmm. And um, that, that to me, you know, at seven, six, seven was just like very fascinating and like magical. Yes. Um, my, the, then there is the landscape, the hill and gully um, landscape. Mm -hmm. and the, um, the spectacular Jamaica blue sky. It, and um, then the vast net of like um, green trees, like plants, you know, the, the, just the, 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 um, the abundance of um, tree, trees everywhere. They all inspired me. They all mm. inspired me. Nice. Thank you for sharing your story, Miss Brian. I know we're, uh, we're talking today about your book, Bonono's Time. I got a copy. 
I want to encourage people uh, who's watching. You got a copy yourself. This is a beautiful book uh, written by Miss Edda uh, Bright. Um, it's about a wonderful time in Jamaica, of course. Um, Miss uh, Brian, this book is uh, nicely written. I'm, you know, I'm glad to get a copy. It just came in the mail today. Um, it's about a hundred pages. I'm going to be reading tonight. Um, as I'm off today, I'll be doing a little bit of reading. Can you tell us a little bit about your book, uh, uh, Miss uh, Brian? Uh, Bununu's time. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but I got it. I love it. I'll be reading it tonight. Tell us a little bit about what this book is all about, please. Uh, first of all, Bunununus is a Jamaican word that means very, very, very wonderful. Um, it is this wonderful time in my childhood that um, my book is capturing. A period um, when children were allowed to be children, mm -hmm. and um, there weren't danger lurking around every uh, corner. The story took place over like a four-day period. Yes. And um, I have here on the back, so I don't um, give away too much. <laughs> um, the story took place over, are you seeing it? Yeah, oh, yeah, August, yeah. Yeah, these are just some of the illustrated characters, but right. I'll just give you, um, the story took place over a four-day period. June, the lead character, is a lovable menace. Every summer holiday, she gets to spend the full two months with her aunt and grandfather in the country. June always misbehaves, smoking her grandfather's tobacco pipe and just being a new friend. June's mom curtails future visits but grudgingly had a change of heart and allowed her to spend the last four days before back to school. The setting is in Mendy, a hill and gully rural district in St. Catherine, Jamaica. The readers get to meet Grandpa Reggie, mm -hmm. a hopeless romantic, Aunt Joyce, whose culinary skills never fail to outdo herself. Wendy, a little black dog. Rupert, a robot 10 pound rooster. <laughs> Bucky Billy, a grumpy ram goat. Wendy and Opal, June's bestest best friend and other hilarious characters. <laughs> and if you don't mind, I could read a little excerpt from the book so you have some to get some idea and feel of the Jamaican characters. Don't give us too much, but you can give us a little. I love That's to hear. <laughs> <laughs> um, while we ate, a very tall raster man with cascading dreadlocks came bobbing along. He halted in front of Aunt Jai's door. Keenly eyeing the jackal, he addressed her. Fair strain. I'm at a pawn for the jack road, he drawled pointing at the massive foot. It was here, me not cutting it. It's 25 pounds it weird. If you want it, you can get the whole food for ten dollars, she said, pausing in between a mouthful of fried fish. Ten dollar? John know the iron I now pay ten dollar for one jack food, she mm. protested. Well, brethren, you have four choice. Take it or leave it and me done with you say to less than its full value, she asserted. He tugged at his dangling nappy beard. John know the sister is dealing with the iron eye shrewdly, he argued. Aunt Joyce ignored him. She busted to the mouthful of fried fish mixed with bunny. The jack would mesmerize the man had he thought about perfect. Without saying another word, he dug in his pocket and pulled out one and two dollar notes and some coins. He counted the coins. Miss Shah, 25 cents, he humbly said, handing all the money to her. That's okay. Thank you very much, she chirped graciously. You can take two of the mangoes, she sweetly offered, pointing to a bank of baskets half filled with small funky spring mangoes. He tucked one mango in his pocket and shoved the other in his mouth. Twisting a red handkerchief into a cutter, 
meaning a head cushion, a makeshift head cushion. He mm -hmm. placed it on the crown of his head. One love says strength, he breathed before hoisting the jacket up on his head and withdrew Bobby on his way. Very, very nice. Now that's just a little sample. If you want to hear the rest of the story, I want to encourage you to get the book. Uh, Miss Brian, can you tell us where folks can get this book? I know you have agents spread out all through Toronto um, and you're offering it locally and as well online. Can you tell us where we can get the book? Uh, um, if it's on um, Amazon Worldwide. My personal um, web address is www.heatherbryan.ca. And um, you can also get it, you can personally get it from um, me, 416-264-0830. And the other number is 647-859-9830. Very, very nice. You want to get this book before it's um, sold out. Ms. Brian, um, you know, nice having you in studio today. And thank you for sharing your fond memories of uh, Jamaica with us growing up as a kid, as a young person, sorry. You know, um, one of the things, you know, when you look back, it's, you know, life today compared to life back then is the big difference. Today, there's so much rules. You can't go sliding. You can't go by the river. You can't fight. You can't. You know, and back home when we were young, when we were kids, uh, you know, just think about the fact that we didn't have toys. You know, we had to make our own toys. Oh, yeah. and, um, today, you know, you just go in the store, you buy it. It's it's a totally different time. You know, most uh, young people today, they're all glued to their cell phones. You know, they don't have that kind of an experience as we had, you know, with the gardening and the planting and making our own clothing making our own toys, you know, and um, especially around Christmas time, you know, yeah, you got to make your own decorations and you got to be creative, right? Uh, um, yeah, it's it, it was really, really, really nice to hear you share those uh, fun memories with us there. Uh, for a young person, Miss Brian, that's looking to uh, be like you, to write their book, you know, uh, someone might be watching this, um video today or maybe sometime in the future or so on and you know they look at you and they see you as an inspiration what advice would you give to that young person who's striving to be like you who want to write a book who want to capture some of their stories and put it together in a book what advice would you give to that young person um first and foremost believe in yourself mm-hmm Trust your idea, mm -hmm. even when in doubt. And the most important thing, start the process. <clears throat> the hardest part of anything is starting. So start the process. Stick with it. Never give up. Very nice, Miss uh, Edder Bryan, the author of this new and excited book, uh, Abunono Time. Get your copy on Amazon.ca or you can reach out to Ms. Brian directly through our website at O'Brien.ca or the phone number she shared early on. Um, get a copy before it's too late. Ms. Brian, thank you so much for being a part of the show and uh, it was a pleasure talking to you today. I look forward to learning more about your artwork and, uh, you know, seeing more about your success story. Thanks very much and you're have most, a good night. You're most welcome. And once again, thank you so much for having me.